Warren Brown is one of Australia's most well-regarded cartoonists. He joins us now in the studio. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Firstly, what was your reaction to the terrible events that happened at Charlie Hebdo? Well, I, I, I wasn't aware of what had happened until the following morning when I received a phone call and I, I sort of scrambled to the computer and looked up the internet and I, I'm still getting my head around what's happened. Um, and I think the idea that... I think one of the, the most unfathomable things about this is you, you kind of... We've, we've become sort of hardened to terrorists, um, these, these extremist Muslim terrorists, walking into maybe a cafe or something and blowing up or shooting people. And we've had this terrible siege in Sydney. Um, when, you know, somebody just wanders in there and starts espousing rhetoric and then there's gunfire and you think, yeah, you know, what was that all about? But we've, we've found a focus here and that's the interesting thing that it's actually, you know, these people have gone in because they are offended by, by cartoons of all things and cartoons are fun they're, you know, they, certainly they tread on the toes of people at times but to me that's, and I think to everybody, it's the uh, cartoonists, why would that be? And I, I, it hasn't frightened me at all as a cartoonist but um, I'm sort of in disbelief that, that, that cartooning and satire, which is such a wonderful aspect of, of, of human life, of civilised life, and I guess that's the thing, it has the word civil in it and these people just aren't civil, that that should come under attack in such a way. Australia also has a proud tradition of cartooning, but do we in Australia push the boundaries in the same way as the artists at Charlie Hebdo were doing? Oh, that's a great question. And certainly, I mean, all cartoon... We do. We do. We've had a, a fab, we have a fabulous tradition of cartooning and it's probably... There's a golden age that never seems to stop in Australia. However, um, you know, we do push the boundaries. You want to push the boundaries and that's what a robust society should be. And, you know, politicians in Australia, sometimes they really get it in the neck. Um, and they understand that because that's part of political life in Australia. It's part of our culture as it is in, in France as well. However, it's it's different in France in that we, our tr proud tradition of, of cartooning in Australia, we look at cartoonists in a kind of, as kind of larrikins, as a kind of, because it's come from that. We've, uh, it's been a, since European settlement, a, a nation of hardship and hard times and living in the bush and all these sorts of things and it's sort of morphed into the Australia we know today. But in France, they view their cartoonists in a different way. They, it's, cartoonists are sort of part of their intelligentsia, if you like. So the French, what, whatever people think of, of the French, they're a nation of great thinkers and cartoonists, they, it's, cartooning is a wonderful marriage of, of drawing, of writing and of thinking and they hold cartoonists very dear. We're looking at some of the responses from your fellow cartoonists uh, after the Charlie Hebdo attacks, but uh, the Prime Minister, Tony Abbott, uh, in light of these attacks, have encouraged media outlets as well as cartoonists uh, not to self-censor, to continue uh, being open and to, to foster that freedom of speech. Now, in Australia, you mentioned that uh, po politicians are often the subject of mm. your cartoons. Yes. Will this attack change your uh, thinking or your work in any way? I think it will harden our resolve as a collective of cartoonists and we've seen this, this amazing sort of galvanising of, of cartoonists around the world and I, I've seen cartoons uh, appear on publications I've never heard of from you know, the four corners of the globe and it doesn't matter whether you can read the caption or not if you don't, can't read Spanish or German or Icelandic you get it and that's mm. the thing about cartoons, you, you see the image I understand it and it's so powerful so uh, for example I, I, wouldn't, I would never vilify Islam ever, however at ISIL, all the, the, the dreadful things that, that, that are attached to it at the moment, that really I think the Islamic community needs to get a handle on this and do something, be proactive about it and say, we're going to come out and say these people are destroying our religion we want nothing to do with it. I think from my perspective as a cartoonist, I'm watching there's a lot of deck chair shuffling around the place, um, but I, I, I think that time, this, this will be a game changer, I think, what's happened in France. Tell us, can you recall an Australian cartoon which had a real impact and prompted people here to question freedom of expression? Um, look, we've had plenty of times when, uh, over the years, and I certainly um, had Patrick Cook on earlier uh, this morning, and of course Patrick was, was probably the, uh, the only cartoonist I know of who was actually taken to court over a cartoon, uh, and uh, it was, uh, ended up being laughed out of court, and as a result people... That was, that was the Harry Seidler cartoon right. that was, yeah. uh, you know, it was a fa fabulous cartoon. Um, and uh, I had Harry Seidler in one of his building yeah, projects, it yeah. looked like a sort of 
backyard incinerator and, and you know, there's elderly people in it and being fed at the one end and then, you know, a little tray at the bottom out the other. And he was taken to court. And I think it was worrying because that was being seen as a sort of a watershed for, you know, where, where you can and can't go with cartooning. As I said, it was laughed out of court, really. And so that's it sent you know, said to the rest of the cartooning world, well, you know, you need to be responsible, of course, but, but you know, freedom of, 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 of publication is there. I mean, we don't actually have the freedom of the press in Australia, as people like to think, but it's, you know, you take a measured approach and you know, uh, you, you know what you can and can't do with it. But um, as far as a cartoon that has actually knocked... Every, every cartoonist, I think, in a metropolitan newspaper has drawn a cartoon that's gone... Uh, you know, out, out of bounds sort of thing and uh, you've had people writing and certainly threats I've had death threats and all sorts of things over the years but you know you know it's we're all sensible and we, we know where it can go and where you can't and let's take a look at one of your artworks now sure. um, you're a prolific cartoonist now this one here uh, tell us a bit about, about well, what we're seeing well the thing is for me I, I this cartoon here it has um, it has the three murderers if you like standing at the gates of heaven and, and it's uh, you know they're expecting you know they're expecting 72 virgins and the, the, what they're getting instead is four cartoonists uh, up in heaven they're like, what do you think of this one that's how cartoonists operate around the world everybody's the same um, and I think that's the, the point I'm sort of saying here is that it's actually from my perspective it's time to actually you know they say um, um, tragedy plus time equals humour, and I think it's time now to actually start, you know, ridiculing, if you like, the the terrible, the terrible evil that is out there, and that's the great way to sort of to hold it up um, and uh, and hold it to account. And humour's a great way of of doing that, and that's sort of it's time now moving on. Um, certainly, we've seen some beautiful cartoons from all over the world, um, and of course, the symbol that we're seeing now is the pencil, mm. um, people holding up a pencil, and that's a a wonderful message because a pencil it's a it's a beautiful thing and that's it's the first thing that a child draws with and it, and it's a symbol uh, of as the Kathy Wilcox cartoon here is, is, suggests which is um, uh, and, and shows exactly the point that you were making yeah well and also I mean not only is it just that from what children learn to draw with it's a symbol of of expression and of creativity, of not only drawing but writing, um, and it's a really simple thing. And I, I, whoever came up with the idea of of, of using it as a as a, a, a symbol of strength for cartooning and creativity more so. I think it's a wonderful thing. And in, if we look at the Australian context at the moment, um, the newspaper media is facing increasing financial pressures and uh, journalists are being laid off and, and uh, mm. other people involved in newspapers. Are you worried about the future of a cartoonists in the country? Gee, I mean, you only have to look at what's been going on in the past few days as to just how people, I think, uh, readers and uh, viewers are taken aback as to the, the power of, of cartoons that have been shown, and it's actually kind of been a bit of a you know um, a bit of a thumb to the nose as to as to what's happening with print. Certainly in France, they love print. That's that's the thing. They hold it very dearly. I mean, we don't have the number of publications in Australia that they do in Paris, particularly. And I was saying before. I mean, they hold their cartoonists so high. I mean, I've been to Paris and walked into bookshops that sell nothing but books on cartooning. Picking up a book called, you know, the superstars of cartooning, like you would see, you know, AFL players or, or movie stars or whatever, and they hold dossiers on them, and you know, a beautiful, sumptuous book, and that's how they hold their cartoonists. Um, I think the medium. Certainly, I mean, there's, a, there's an argument that, that print is, is presumably on the way out, but um, I, I think there's a role for, the, for print to do things that, um, that electronic media can't do. Um, and certainly in Europe, uh, you see that, that newspapers are very strong. Yeah. Actually, uh, walking down the street in Sydney yesterday outside a couple of bookshops, I noticed that there were compilations of cartoons in the windows, so something that we're definitely thinking about here at home at the moment as well. But I think we have one more of your artworks to take a look at. Yes. Um, this is a cartoon. Uh, uh, it's been... Uh, it was difficult, I guess, to kind of... To, to try and encapsulate what it meant. And this cartoon here has a, the, a gunman who has really taken control of the canvas, if you like, or the drawing board. And you can see his Kalashnikov rifle on the left there. And he's painted the image of death, and he's painted it with blood. And uh, in the background, there's the, the Eiffel Tower and, and Paris there. And I, I, I think um, there have been a lot of very heavy hitting cartoons like, the, like these from all around the world. Um, and uh, I, I just... It, it, it's a moment in time for cartoonists, and I think it's—I um, think it will 
it will prove, as I was saying before, a bit of a game changer um, as to for the rest of the world to say, you, you've done what and why did you do this? You did this to cartoonists and, and satirists and writers. Why is this? It's the complete antithesis of what, as Tony Abbott correctly calls, a death cult is all about. That's exactly what they are. Well, Warren Brown from the Daily Telegraph, thank you very much for coming in today to talk to us. Thank you.